Hey everyone, it's Colin, how's it going? If you've watched many of my videos, you know that I've got, well, quite a few hobbies. And one that I've been into for a while, but rarely talk about is professional audio. And of course, over the years, I've accumulated quite a bit of gear. Lately, I've been getting into CAD and 3D printing though. So this time, let's combine the two and see if we can come up with a way to put some of my equipment on display. So it's like the nerdiest thing ever, but over time, I've ended up with a small collection of wireless microphones. Most of them are either obsolete or work in a frequency range that's no longer allowed to be used. One day, I realized that they actually represent a decent cross-section of the history of pro audio technology. It would be kind of cool to show them off somehow, so I decided I wanted to make something that would hang on the wall, kind of similar to how I built my Game Boy Color Shadow Box several years ago. A while back, I had picked up a wooden cutting board from IKEA, and it seemed to be a good fit to act as the base. I could have cut down a piece of wood from the hardware store instead, but this option was quicker and cheaper. I figured that the best way to mount the mics would be with the kind of clips you'd use to put them on a stand, so I bought a bunch of generic ones off of eBay for a few bucks. My initial thought was to buy some of these flanges to mount the clips to the board, but after looking at it, the mics would have stuck out too far. I wanted them to sit closer in. After thinking about it for a while, I realized that a 3D printed piece would be the key to this. I used a free online 3D modeling tool called Tinkercad to put together a design for a custom mounting bracket that would work in conjunction with the clips I bought. I had found another kind of mic clip online specifically for doing what I wanted, but I didn't like the look of the mics hanging from it, so I stuck with the model I made. Now, I don't actually have a 3D printer, but a generous viewer named Joel from Idaho offered to print these parts out for me. And I gotta say, they look great. To mount the board to the wall, I picked up some keyhole brackets. I drilled several holes in the back of the board using a Forstner bit. It's a special kind of drill bit that's able to make holes with flat bottoms. I didn't need to go too deep, just enough to make room for the screw heads sticking out of the wall when they were inside the keyhole. Then I pre-drilled some smaller holes for screws and got the keyhole brackets installed. The cutting board came with this hole already in one end of it, and I wanted to cover that with one of the mic brackets. So I set it in place, then traced the screw holes on the board. I could then take the measurements off of that to figure out where to put the rest of the brackets so they'd be evenly spaced. I got all of those screw holes pre-drilled to keep the wood from splitting, then attached the brackets. They work with just the top part of the mic clip, so I got those disassembled next. I cut down this tail part of the clip with a utility knife, which was pretty easy because the plastic is fairly flexible. The clip then fits into this slot in the bracket, and I could secure it in place with a simple nut and bolt. To my surprise, I got the dimensions of this right on the first try, which was a major relief. All I had left to do was hang the board on the wall and clip the mics in place. Now, I know you're thinking, dude, you're such a nerd. This project is useless. You're like the only person on the planet with a wireless mic collection. And um, yeah, you're right. But here's the thing. This is a great example of how to get started with 3D modeling and printing. These brackets really aren't that complex. I'm a total novice at designing stuff like this, but I got the hang of it fairly quick. And despite their simplicity, they work really well. And I can think of other ways that small 3D printed parts can be useful for putting stuff on display like this. Joel, the guy who printed these for me, came up with an even better way of making a Game Boy Color Shadow Box. Instead of just sandwiching them inside the glass like I did, he designed and printed dummy cartridges that mount to the back and hold the handhelds in place. It's a way cleaner setup. 
What's also nice is that there are plenty of free tools to do this with. I use Tinkercad, but there's FreeCAD, 3D Slash, and a whole bunch of others. So to start, the only thing you really need to invest is just your time. These basic tools work by putting shapes together. So if you've ever played with Lego, you can do this. In fact, Tinkercad even has a brick mode that lets you see your designs as if they were made from Lego. When you're ready to get something printed, you don't even need to own a 3D printer. A lot of those tools can hook up directly to paid services like Shapeways, who will print your item and mail it to you. A local hackerspace or even your public library probably has 3D printers available too, often with people willing to help you learn how to use them. From this experience, I've actually decided to take the plunge and buy a printer for myself. Now, I haven't received it yet, and I'm not really planning on producing videos about using it, but it's just so cool to go from an idea in my head to an item in my hand, and I'm sure that 3D printed parts will make their way into future project episodes. And if you think something like this looks cool, well, hopefully it'll provide some inspiration so you can put on display whatever nerdy thing you collect. If you liked the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at thisdoesnotcomp. And as always, thanks for watching.